Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all keeping well and I've had another good week. Been a busy week here. Um, like I said last week, I was at Norwich versus Ipswich last Saturday. Heck of an atmosphere and boy oh boy was, was Norwich up for it and, and every single Norwich supporter. It was a brilliant atmosphere and uh, <laughs> there was lots of dogs abuse uh, before the game towards the Ips well, Ipswich fans and Norwich fans and vice versa, but I'll go into that in a minute in the set. But um, yeah, that was a great game and a bit of a surprise result. Norwich, well, not a surprise for any Norwich fans because I don't think you've got beat by Ipswich at home since 2006, something like that. So uh, yeah, an expected result, you might say, but um, certainly I think Norwich, uh, they're in the playoff zone at the minute and Ipswich were top on Saturday, so uh, it was like, oh, Ipswich are going to come to Carrow Road and beat them. But no, it was the other way around, 1-0 to Norwich. We'll go into the set in a minute. And it, it was it was quite a nervy game at times. I mean, more more on the Ipswich front, they just they were, they were added lots of pressure and I did Ipswich attack for uh, both halves and... Um, Lots, lots of play my way, but they just couldn't. They just weren't critical enough, I don't think. Weren't clinical enough and, and just put one or two shots over the bar and that. But um, yeah, 1-0 to Norwich. And then it was a real similar atmosphere at Leeds on Tuesday night. Leeds versus Sunderland. Again, Leeds expected to run away with it. They were second second in the league or third in the league. And um, there's, a, there's about, I think there's a point or eight a point or two points just between top three top four so it's really tight in the championship fantastic league but um yeah same again lots of nervous it was quite it was quiet to ellen road at times and i said i said to, oh hi to malcolm if you're watching malcolm i was sat next to malcolm and uh, i'm back at leeds again tomorrow so no doubt i'll be uh, sh sharing a space with malcolm again but yeah we were i said to malcolm it's really quiet isn't it and he said yeah that's the nerves i went blooming it, it blooming is and and uh, it really did reflect on the players, I think. I think the players picked up on the nerves and they just could not finish for Toffee. So, uh, and it ended up being nil-nil. Quite a good result for Sunderland, I guess. But Because uh, I think they're 13th, Sunderland. So, yeah, one of them games again. And it's that time of the season. So many strange and, and, and unexpected results. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to this weekend again. I'm back at Leeds tomorrow, like I, like I just said. Leeds-Blackburn Rovers. So that hopefully should be, should be a good game. And Leeds might just find that extra bit of oomph and uh, and uh, have a winning game, but we shall see. So it's a 12.30 kick-off as well, so nice early start, and I should get home at a, a reasonable time, which uh, which will be good. But um, anyway, before I go into the set, like the thumbnail said, I've had a bit of a tweak on the R3 focusing, and I'll just show you that now on screen. So it's only a minor tweak, but it's made quite a bit of difference, and it's in... Case four, that's what that's the case that I use for shooting. Um, and it's in the tracking sensitivity. Now I add that on locked on, minus two, locked on to my subject. But I found that it was, for obvious reasons really, a little bit sticky. And if I wanted to switch from one player to another, you know, in the same sequence, it was a little bit, come on, come on, yep, yeah, then it'd go sort of thing. Whereas it wasn't instant. So I've gone into responsive now and I've gone plus two in responsive and it seems to have made just that little bit of difference, which in theory it should do. But yeah, just another tweak and I just thought I'd let you know that I'm still tweaking it and trying to get it right. And it was 100% on fire last week, uh, Saturday and Tuesday. So I think I'm about there now. I think I've got as, m as many adjustments and minor adjustments as I can. And uh, with that in plus two on the responsive, I reckon it's made just that just that little extra bit of difference that I really looked, I was looking for. And now, when I'm on AI servo, like we all shoot in single point, you move from one player to another, it's bang, bang, and it's straight there. So, yeah, it's definitely made a little bit of difference. I know some of you guys uh, shoot in auto on the on the case. But, um, yeah, I think that's just fine. That's just pinpointed it nicely. And uh, just thought I'd give you the heads up on that. And, um, yeah, I think I'm about there now with the focusing. Good old R3. Take back all I said about you. <laughs> Uh, humble pie and user error or what but anyway <laughs> let's jump into the set Right, so like I say, last Saturday, Carrow Road, great to be back. I've only shot there once before and it was a night game, so it was nice to be at Carrow Road and I just I should have took a picture of it really. We sit in pits just um at Carrow Road, just on the edge of the pitch here. There's you just you just sort of a bit lower, and I'll tell you what, you get some lovely shots. Because you're that little bit lower, 
your backdrop is always, nearly always, fans in the far, the far stand. And uh, the depth at 2.8 is really nice, just by sitting that bit lower. I used to enjoy uh, shooting at Upton Park at West Ham. And not only because I'm a fan like, but because you were nice and low. Some people don't like the pits, but I think you can get a really nice low angle. You can make the players as big as you like in the frame, nice and powerful. And I've got one particular image from that game that I really like for that one reason, the depth. And uh, I'll show you it in a minute. But yeah, so we sit in the pits there and I actually don't mind it. And for once, it was dry. So that was good. So yeah, a bit of a GV session. And then obviously massive massive derby and i wanted to get some sort of police presence there so just shot this just to show that the police were there in good force in full force and um and then i went round to the away end where all the ipswich fans were queuing up just a general view and there was there were one or two brave norwich fans walking past and i never really got the shot that i wanted of a bit <laughs> more abuse that you could see that it was an abuse abusive environment in the shop but never really got it but you can see this lad here and he's a big fella and you can imagine what they were all singing and he was just going ah shut up I mean there was lots of police around so there weren't going to be any fighting but um yeah he was getting he was getting dogs abuse and uh, I was trying my best not to laugh but um and then just got uh, I wanted to get some more of the police and this just nice just lent itself quite nicely nice shot just of uh, a fan talking to the police with the the um, canaries shot in the background. And uh, again, police waiting for the Ipswich coach to arrive. And it just lent itself quite nice with Norwich City there and then a line of police. And uh, yeah, the, the, this is the Ipswich coach arriving. And God, the, the Norwich fans didn't have to give them some abuse. But uh, that was fun. And then just general view of three, three young lads having a bit of a good time just before kickoff. And... Uh, there's Kieran McKenna, the uh, Ipswich boss, having a bit of a laugh and a joke with his, his staff, his backroom staff on the pitch. And they stayed on the pitch for ages, they did, but um, which was good. Now, this chap walked towards me. I, shot, I, 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 didn't, I hadn't spotted him before, and I just shot away, and I thought, I'll try and find out who he is. Turns out it was Ipswich CEO, Mark Ashton, so really pleased that I got one or two shots of him. And then I did look, we'll see in a minute... Um, he was in the stands as well, and I got another shot of him in the stands with his, his blazer on and that. But yeah, you just never know who's going to be about, and just snap away. And if you can, ask someone. Don't be don't be ashamed to ask if you don't know. It's the, if you don't if you don't ask, you'll 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 never get you'll never get the answer. So yeah, I was my worst mistake at school. <laughs> Probably why I'm a bit thick. I never asked enough questions at school. I always sat quiet. And I wish I'd asked more, but yeah, I don't know. I'll probably make a fool of myself now, like I have done on plenty of these videos, including this R3 video from a couple of videos ago. But yeah, you've got to ask, otherwise you'll never know. So yeah, if you shoot anyone and you don't know who it is, just ask someone. No harm in it. They'll either tell you who it is or they won't. And you can explain why you're asking, you know. But uh, yeah, so got a nice shot of Mark Ashton, the CEO, and then more of Kieran McKenna, just on the pitch, just having a look round. Say, big derby game. Um, one of them you could use, this is obviously before the game, could be used as a bit of dejection or anything, so uh, shot that. And then we're into kick-off, just scanning around looking for fans, because they were really abusing each other, and this Norwich fan was singing towards the Ipswich fans, and quite animated, so that made a nice shot. There's Mark Ashton, the CEO of Ipswich, just uh, giving a smile in the, in the stands. And uh, one of Kira McKenna, just before kick-off, after the, the manager's handshake, another, port another portrait, one of him there. And uh, I quite like this with the yellow backdrop and the blue Ipswich players. That made quite a nice scene. And then off we go. Just a bit of action. I've, that was quite, quite lots. There was lots of aggro through the game and the referee was hammered with, uh, with different decisions and that going against one team and against for another. And yeah, lots of protests throughout the game. Thought that was quite nice. And as you can see, what I was on about, because I'm sat quite low, you can't see much pitch, but look how he stands out against the backdrop. The real, you know, the depth is fantastic. And that's all because I'm sat a bit lower. If I was a bit higher, you'd have that sort of here and he'd be split. But yeah, made really nice. It's really nice when you can sit low. And uh, just one of the ref there. And um, all the time looking at the bench, always look at the bench. You never know what result's going to be, so try and get as much reaction if you can, whether it's dejection or, or elation or, or celebration with the managers. You just never know. So got one of him looking down there and then looking up. You know, there's two different scenes there in the space of a second shot. So just filling the boots with the managers. And there's Wagner, the Norwich manager, just shouting out instruction and that. 
and then uh, back to a bit more play. He actually got fouled, look, he got pulled over and it was a free kick. And that was the free kick where Nunes ended up scoring. And it just went over the wall. Look, you can just see, uh, I can't remember his name now, um, Chaplin, Connor Chaplin, just going past him, look. just I don't know if it actually brushed his arm or not, but it's obviously he's got his eyes shut there, look. So it's quite tight, but just put it around and over the wall, past Connor Chaplin, 1-0 to Norwich. And, uh, God, the, the, the stadium erupted. And uh, shame that the ref's just in the way there, but you can just see the ball. So I sent it in. And... Uh, and there's the ball there going in, look. And uh, and then luckily, I'm thinking, oh, no, celebration's going to go the wrong way. He ran to the middle of the pitch and ran towards the fans, which was fantastic, straight at us. And uh, got, you know, I was quite quite successful this and got quite quite a few uses from it. So, yeah, it was really nice into the fans and <laughs> the old ball boys thinking, what the heck. But, um, yeah, lots of celebration. And there's Duffy jumping on his teammates. And, yeah, I was just hosing him down and got lots out of it, which was great. And obviously it turned out to be the only goal of the game, so I was, I was quite chuffed, really. But um, obviously there's no excuse, you shouldn't miss a free kick, so that was quite quite good. But to get the celebration like that was fantastic. And then just uh, a bit of action there. And again, look at the depth, it's lovely how they stand out. But um, Kieran McKenna and uh, is uh, one of his staff there, just having a bit of a conflab, so I sent that one off as discussing tactics, you know. And a uh, bit of time wasting by Norwich. So I, got, I managed to get the ref tapping his watch, which was good. Bit of an overhead clearance from Duffy there. And again, look at the, look at the separation. It's really smart, isn't it? So that's really nice. But uh, this is the one that I quite like. Great depth from behind. They're right, they're right close to the, the touchline where I was. And, uh, you know, really nice and powerful. Fill the frame, that square crop. He's just got his finger in his eye there, look. But, and they're both, uh, both battling pers for possession, obviously Ipswich looking to cross it, he's looking to nick it out or just or nick the ball. And uh, yeah, I really like that image. You can get a bit picky that this bit sticks out here, but you're always going to get a bit picky. But I really like that image as goes the depth and how the players stand out, you know, so uh, really like that one. And a uh, bit of dejection from Connor Chaplin. And uh, he just put his shot around the bar or, or uh, around the post or over the bar, I can't remember, but a bit of dejection there. And... Um, he had a shot and it went over the bar. They just couldn't get it on target. And a uh, bit more, bit more uh, battle for possession here, look. And uh, just some tackles. And he had a good game, good game. So I thought I'd just emphasise and try and get a few portraits and a few stock images of the keeper, of the Norwich keeper. Another one of always keeping an eye on the dugout. I always say that, a bit, just to get a bit of reaction, a bit more reaction from Kieran McKenna, McKenna there. And a uh, bit more action. Keeper giving his defence a bit of instruction and then always looking at the crowd as well and there was just one lad just singing and cheering there and um, referee bl blows the final whistle and the fans went absolutely mental and it was absolutely great, what a great atmosphere and uh, yeah, a bit of dejection there from one of the Ipswich players and uh, elation there from Nunes and Duffy with uh, there's Kieran McKenna in the background, look, although he's really soft, this is at two point, uh, 3.5 look obviously but um, yeah, nice drop off there, but you can see all the ips where you can just read the mood. And uh, yeah, brilliant. And then these celebrated right in front of me and uh, it was great. Absolutely fantastic. Some great scenes. And uh, yeah, 1-0 Norwich. Right, on to Leeds. And uh, just thought I'd put this one in. I always like to try and find a reflection of some sort. And this is the, um, like the, it right in the corner of the ground. They've got a, like a, a big glass fronted and glass sided office where security and that, sit in and obviously can see the whole of the ground and um, just thought I'd try and make the ground a bit bigger than it actually is you know so I use the uh, use the reflection which I thought worked quite well but um, yeah let me know what you think on that one but if you can sometimes grounds have glass fronts you know all the way along all, all your big boxes they'll have it all the way along and if you stand up you can actually get a nice mirror reflection of the whole ground in the window as well but um, yeah it looks quite nice and then straight into the game and uh, I've just I've, I've highlighted this one because of the pull that I always rave on about on the R5. So this is Bamford getting uh, fouled right in the middle of the park. And then once he was fouled and fell over, just like that, I can still pull just Bamford in. And he's still pin sharp, look. And the ball's pin sharp. And, uh, yeah, 
that, I love that R5 just for the pull. It's that 45 meg sensor. I know I've gone on about it nearly every every video, but I love that. And I just thought I'd give you a bit of a, an example of why I love it so much. But um, yeah, uh, Archie Gray, he's always in the news, bringing it past two players. Fantastic player he is. And then uh, we've got Sunderland keeper gathering the ball as his, as his one of his defenders jumps over him. Look, made quite a nice frame. And uh, old Georgino Rutter going down in the penalty box. And I'm thinking, oh, ref's going to blow for a penalty. But he didn't. But um, just thought I'd send that one in. And there's Rutter again. Always oh, battling forward with the ball ears. Fantastic player. Lovely to watch. Um, this image, I thought their, their keeper, Patterson, had a really good game. And um, it, it was clearing every single cross that Leeds were putting in and I thought I'd send this and it ended up being used in I think in the sun so yeah really chuffed that I sent it in like I say I don't really like players backs as a rule but the image tells a story you know once again clearing the ball and um, yeah I, I think you can see Kamara here you can see his face so you can see someone's eyes but um, yeah they they, ended, they must have liked that and they, ended, they, they liked to uh, like that shot of him clearing the ball once again, you know, and he, he kept a clean sheet. But uh, yellow card for Ballard. And then once, I always say, once the yellow card's been given, always watch for a bit of chat between ref and player afterwards because he was getting a proper roasting off the ref and managed to get him pointing, which was quite nice, made a nice made a nice image. And I thought, you've got to be careful, mate. You'll be getting done for a descent in a minute. But uh, another one of Rutter putting a cross in, tight cross in, and I thought he was framed quite nicely on this one, so... Sent that one in, and uh, that's Job Bellingham, Jude Bellingham's brother, who, who Joe plays for Sunderland, obviously. And uh, I emphasised him a bit and sent a bit of stock of him in with his brother being so famous, you know. But um, yeah, he, he, nice climbing header there to clear the ball once again. Um, and then best save of the match, really, and probably one of the only shots on target was a free kick, uh, and Melier managed to save it, and I caught it on the 70 to 200 and managed to catch it on the goal cam as well, on the remote. So, uh, yeah, quite happy with that. But at the end, I thought they might, one of the papers might have picked that up as the only real decent save and that Melier kept leads in the game, but it came to nothing. But you just never know. And like I said, I'm enjoying putting the remote remotes out at the minute. It's just another angle that you've got covered. If it fires, sometimes they don't fire. But, um, yeah, so that fired. Got that shot and that shot to go with it. And uh, Nathan Ampadu, just a bit of dejection. He put his shot round the post. Um, and then they should have had a penalty, Leeds should. I reckon if VAR was in the championship, they would have got a penalty because I can't think which player it was now. Could have been this player on the floor here. Jumped up for a corner. Uh, I didn't actually get it, so I haven't included it. But And he, he, he literally punched the ball away over Rondon's head. There's Rondon claiming. And um, Let's just zoom in a bit and just look at that R5, the quality of the R5. Look at that look. I just absolutely love that R5. You could you could print that easy, couldn't you? Let's just go again. Let's be brave and go again. Look at that. It's still okay. Yeah, it's a little bit pixelated down, a bit waxy. But if you imagine that I've already cropped that a little bit. And uh, yeah, so I sent that one in to say, you know, Leeds claim for a handball. But it wasn't given. Couldn't believe it. So really, I think they should have had two penalties in the game. But uh, yeah, Sunderland got away with one. Uh, old Farker, the Leeds boss, giving the fourth official some stick. And uh, and that's it. Full time. I'm just looking for a bit of dejection. Players are absolutely knackered. And uh, Gruev, I think, is Elie Gruev. Um, <coughs> Leeds player. Sat, just slumped straight to the ground and uh, looked absolutely knackered. Nil-nil. Blown the chance to go top of the league. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. But luckily, Ipswich... I think they drew, or did they even get beat? No, they drew on Tuesday. No, on Wednesday they drew away at Millwall. I think nil nil um, or one all. So they they missed the opportunity to to go top. So I think Leicester are still top at the minute, but um, I can't remember. It's so tight at the top. I can't remember which ones at which ones top. But it's really tight between Leicester, Leeds, and Ipswich. So we'll see what this weekend brings. But yeah, looking forward to tomorrow's lunchtime kickoff. Hopefully they'll have a few bacon baps in the, in the press room. You never know. But, uh, yeah, and hopefully it's going to stay dry. And uh, like I said, I think I've got this sus now. Just a little tweak, like I said, on the tracking, on the, the tracking sensitivity into plus two. And it seems to be really razor sharp now on the focusing. And, uh, yeah, really chuffed with it. But got that sorted. And, uh, yeah, job's good. And I'm actually... Heading away next week on an aviation trip. I'm off to Greece um, for exercise in Iocus. 
uh, flying to Athens on Monday afternoon, um, spending the week in, well, spending the time we get to our digs, it's going to be Tuesday morning, but we've got, we're going on to Andravida Air Base on, on Wednesday for an open day and an, the, to get uh, in, uh, close and personal with all the different countries and their aircraft that are there, and then we're going to go in the hills um, on the Tuesday and the Thursday and Friday morning to see if we can get any of the, the Greek Air Force flying through the hills, so that'll be good. So yeah, I'm away next week, but I'll be back again for next Saturday for a game. Not sure where I am yet, but um, I might do a video. Let me know if you want to see an aviation video. I might do an aviation. I'm, I'm, I'm torn between just taking real basic kit, just the 400 and, and one body, or just taking a bit more kit and doing a bit of a video or two from there. Might even do a bit of live on, on Instagram or whatever. But um, yeah, let me know if you're interested in seeing an aviation video for any aviation fans out there, and I might just knock up a video. But um, I am going to make a video now after this one for next Friday. Um, and uh, yeah, jobs are good. Un. Right, thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Do let me know where you are this week. If you're out, have a great game and uh, catch up next week. Jobs are good. Un.